Lori Morgan may not fit the mold of your typical country music superstar, but she is as popular as anybody in the, uh, in the business. She sings from her heart. She joins us fresh from her duties as co-host of last night's American Music Awards to talk about her new CD, which is out now, and about life in the fast lane of country music. And thanks for coming on, and welcome to our little show. Thank you very much. Can you give much. us, like, any little backstage tidbits from co-hosting the show last night with Tom Jones and Queen Latifah? Tidbits? Yeah. I'll like tell little you what, stuff that happened. I'll you know. tell you what. I, I made a lot of good friends at that show this yeah. year, and, and I had a blast. Uh, Queen Latifah was absolutely a joy to work with. She was just fun. We laughed. Yeah, she was funny last night. She was great. And uh, made good friends with boys to men backstage. Okay. And, and uh, we how, just... How, how good was the friendship? Pretty good, Tom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to read about it in the papers, are we? No, okay. no, you're not going to read about it in the papers. But um, it, I had a lot of fun. It, it really was. Uh, and sometimes when you go and do those shows, you know, you, you feel a little bit intimidated because, yeah. the, the, well, because the country, it's not the country music show. Right. So when you're the country artist and you're with the country music association or whatever, and you're kind of the underdog at these shows, and it's, it's really up to them to kind of make you feel welcomed, and they really did. They, it was just wonderful. You know, I mentioned about this, uh, uh, you know, being in the papers, and I'm kidding you, of course, but you have been in the papers. You've been the <laughs> queen of the tabloids on many occasions. Yeah. And I wonder how the reality of your life stacks up with what some of your fans might read in these, uh, you know, these rags that come out. The reality is, is so much different than, than what's written in these magazines. And the sad thing about it is, if, if these people would just stop and think about what they're doing to a lot of different people's yep. lives, which it, it's obvious that they really don't care. But, you know, it, it really makes it tough for me. when I have two children who read these. You see, that's what they never think of. That's and, right. And to give you a little from my own personal experience, one of the, one of the, uh, the rags years and years ago when I was on the NBC television network had a little squib in their people column that uh, there have been threats on Tom Snyder's life. And now your daughter, eight years old, comes to you and says, Daddy, why is somebody trying to kill you? And right. you look at your child and you, you, you want to reassure you that you're going to be okay, you right. know. But, you know, they don't never, they don't think of the kids and your mom and dad and people in That's your life. That's right. They think of that person that, that either they are, they're out to get them in some way or another. But, I mean, the, the tabloids have really, they, they've ruined a lot of relationships for me. My daughter, who I've begged not to pick these things up at the stores anymore, um, you know, questions that she asks and the kids at school ask her and, and yeah. it's a very tough time for, for kids anyway. And this just adds fuel to the fire. Like you say, they've got enough going That's on right. growing up. It's That's no fun right. growing up these days. And then to read that mom's in trouble or mom jilted this guy or what was the one where I believe you had a relationship or have a relationship with a member of the United States Senate. Have a relationship. <laughs> yeah. Well, now that part is true. But that's okay. But then just write the story. You don't have to write that mom did something else to start the relationship well, with this exactly. man. Well, exactly. And what they, you know, what they printed in there, uh, how they described him in the in the article. Don't and repeat it. Don't I'm even not. give it credence. Good. I'm not. Good. I'm not. But they, uh, they, they they put it out here for me to hold up, and I'm not even going to hold it. Good. Get it out of here. Good. But anyway, I mean, you know, my relationships, I feel like I give a lot to the public, and I really do. I mean, I'm on the road hundreds of days out of the year. I do all kinds of public appearances and, and do what I'm supposed to do, and my yeah. private life should be personal. Absolutely. By and the way, wouldn't you love to know what all these guys and gals from the Star and the National Enquirer and the Globe, what go Do on? behind closed yeah, doors. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. You know, they probably go in there and have animals in the rumors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. I hate that when they bring the animals in. Oh, me too. Yeah. It's just so kinky. <laughs> anyway, your dad was the legendary George Morgan, and I know that he, he cajoled you, uh, if not kicking and screaming, uh, possibly with a little bit of nervousness on stage at the Grand Ole Opry when you were but 13 years of age to sing with him. I was 13, yes, when I first... And actually, my dad told me, he said, now... He, Dad used to sit around the house and listen to me sing on the guitar and, mm -hmm. and beg me to sing for him and whatever. And finally one day he said, w would you mind singing on the Grand Ole Opry? And before I knew what I said, I said yes. Sure. And, um, Did you know what the Grand Ole Opry was? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. I'd, been, I'd been gone there all my okay. life. And um, the, the funny thing about it was he never did tell me, this is what I want you to do. He said, but if it's what you want to do, then I'll help you all I can, right. and that's what I want you to be. But he never really pushed me onto, onto the stage. Matter of fact, the first night, 
he told me, he said, if you'll stand over on the wings of the stage and you decide that you don't want to come on, you just look at me and shake your head no and okay. I won't introduce you, okay. you know. And you went? I, I kind of gave a shrug where I still wasn't real <laughs> sure, but he went on and introduced me anyway. Now, this was the new Opry, right? The, the, no, the... this was the old Ryman Auditorium. This was um, 1973 or 4. Okay, now... And they uh, moved to the new Ryman. And the... Right along in there, because for NBC, we went down to open the new one in, I believe, 74, 74. when they moved to what is now Opryland, but, right. but this was the Grand old Opry in their new... The brand okay. new one. And wasn't the old one down, like the Ryman was downtown in Nashville? Downtown Printer, Nashville, Printer's Printer's still Alley? there. Printer's Alley? Well, no, it wasn't in Printer's Alley. It was uh, close right, to Printer's close Alley. To. Yeah. So we went over there because I knew some people at WSM. And then we went to a restaurant called the Brass Rail yeah. in Nashville. Yeah, that was in Printer's Alley. That's exactly right. I, and I hope it's still going because it, it was a great, great joint. You know, I don't know. I haven't been to Printer's Alley since I was in probably, I was probably 20 years old the yeah. last time I went yeah. to Printer's Alley. It used to be a really fun little I, night I, spot I, in I Nashville. I haven't been there since you were one. <laughs> <laughs> But we went in this printer's alley, and the, and, the, and the lady there, the waitress, she was saying, uh, you know, people in Nashville, uh, the whole South, I lived there for five years, and the people in the South are just great. You know, they want Thank you to you. be I comfortable so and great. She says, honey, they, all, they called all the guys, honey, you got to try our warm bacon dressing. So we said, fine. It was with some kind of salad with the warm bacon dressing. Geez, they come out with a frying pan and, and a slab of bacon. I mean, it was like a whole butt, you know, and they throw it in there, and this bacon's going all over the table. It's in the martinis. It's in the Manhattans. I mean, <laughs> this bacon. That's Brenner's <laughs> Alley. It, it was great. So eventually you marry a man named Keith Whitley, and that's another, if not a tragedy, a downtime in your life because you learn that he dies. He has succumbed to alcoholism, and it's right. taken his life. And how do you get through that travail? You know, I've been... As much tragedy as, as the press and people really like to, I guess, harp on so much as the, all the tragedy in my life, I've really been blessed with... Oh, I understand. Uh, and, ...and very, very good fortunes. I mean, unfortunately, that was one of the major tragedies of my life. And, but I have a wonderful family at home. Oh, I'm not, I'm not um, trying to accentuate the negative. Don't, no, don't get me wrong. No, I'm saying you ask me how I get through it. Yeah. And, and I have a wonderful family who supported me so much and my friends and and my wonderful road band and by the way your sister's here with you tonight yes yeah, she is my, my sister does all my wardrobe and uh, takes care of me on the road and that kind of stuff so i had a lot of support when when that happened with keith mm -hmm. and thank god i did and there's so many people out there who don't really have that support there but had it not been for my family and friends and my two children i i probably would have just laid down and died right with him you know in Watching movies about people who are in country music, and the one that comes to my mind most quickly is Sweet Dreams, the Patsy Cline story. Yes. And there was a man in her life who, for a time, had too much to drink. Does, does, and, and we've read that others in the country music profession have had a bout with John Barleycorn, as I say, and have either wrestled it to a draw or succumbed to it. Because of the nature of your business and the emotions and the melancholy involved, is this something that's a part of the country music scene? You know I mean, what? You never, you, you, know, you never hear of country music and dope. You hear of country music and liquor. I'm going to tell you what, what I really think, okay. and I, this, is, this is my personal opinion. I think that artists tend to want to be around people who are up. Yep. Who are, you're, you know, you want somebody who's going to make you feel good and Absolutely. somebody who's going to make you laugh. And unfortunately, most of the time, uh, you, you find somebody funny when you're singing in a bar uh, who makes you feel good, who yeah. makes you laugh. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's usually the drunk. And yeah. they, you start feeling more um, like, yeah, this guy's really funny or this girl's really funny yeah. because, and then all of a sudden you become involved and, and the drinking becomes a, a more serious problem. But I think at first it's, it's a thing where they make you feel good and, and they're fun and they're good to be around. And so I think it kind of mixes. You know, I've told this so many times, but I love to tell it. And, you know, when you have your own show, you can do those things. You know what you get when you sing a country song backward. What? You get your car back, your job back. <laughs> and your wife back. <laughs> and you sober the rest of your life, yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back here with all of you on the toll-free highway. It's Lori Morgan, folks. Uh, Lori Morgan, folks. What did I say, Forks? Forks. Yeah, Forks. See, if I weren't on television, I never would say anything that stupid, but I'm <laughs> so scared because there's more of them out there than there is of us. We're at 1-800-95-CBS-TV. We'll be right back after these messages. Baby, today I changed my mind. 
We are back, and here is Barbara on the toll-free from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hi, Barbara. It's Tom. How are you? How are you, Barbara? Good. I wanted to tell Lori that she looked great last night in the first dress that she had on, and I've never seen anything like it. My husband loved it. And who designed her wardrobe? Uh, the gentleman who designed the clothes uh, last night for the show is a gentleman by the name of Mark Bauer, who's going to be doing all my um, wardrobe for the 95 tour. And um, I was very honored that he... He's agreed to, to do all my outfits for me. Yeah. Have you noticed, Barbara, that all of the outfits or most of the outfits that Lori wears in her personal and public appearances, to my eye, are very simple and very classic without a lot of what guys would call frou-frou. Frou-frou. Yeah. Have no you noticed that, Barbara? Yeah. They do look very nice. Thank you. They do. It was really great. My husband just couldn't stop talking about it. Which but I'm sure brought joy to your life last night. <laughs> That's okay. You know why? Because... Everybody tells hey, honey, me that I look like Hey, honey, she does look good, doesn't she? Yeah, boy, I'll tell you, honey, how come you don't look like that? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Barbara. I really appreciate that. Thank thanks, you. Uh, thanks, Barbara. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. So, a single mom with a career. You got, how old are your kids now? My daughter Morgan is 14, and my son Jesse is 7. Well, Morgan is just on the verge of that wonderful experience called uh, teenage female yes, adolescence. I am experiencing, <laughs> experiencing it, er, er, however you say that word, every day. It's, Every day, it's something, something new. What is it? And for the first time, she said one of my lines from my young adulthood, you just don't understand, Mommy. <laughs> and I went, oh, my gosh, it's all coming back to me now. Isn't it something, it's you know, I, I have a daughter, and I remember when she said that to me, you, you know, Dad, you just no. don't get it, mm. you know. And what was Mom's response to that? I just cracked up laughing. <laughs> what else can you say? What can you say? And, of course, your boy is seven, so he's got a little ways to go before he gets there. What is the difference uh, in raising a son and a daughter based upon the first seven years of the experience? You've well, done? Morgan was, was a very calm child. She sat and played with dolls, and she was not a... You know, she, when you told her to go to bed, she'd go to bed, and Jesse's, like, jumping off the couches and Power Ranger and... and <laughs> You know, Ninja Turtles, and I mean, he's just wanting to go all the time. And it's... We are something, aren't we? Huh? Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, the you old are. testosterone is <laughs> get going. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's no stopping it. You know, I have a friend who's got a little boy. She said, I never knew about the truck gene. I mean, this kid's on the couch every time a truck goes by the house. Look, hey, look at that. You That's know. right. I remember when I was a kid, man, the day they paved the alley, that was the biggest day that of my life. That was a big day well, of your life. Huge, huge sure. day. How much, and I've, and I've got the new CD here, which is uh, Lori Morgan. It's called War Paint, and I think you see it on the screen there. When you put an album like this together, how much of your personal life and personality, well, personality to put in to be sure, but how much of your personal life do you try and put in your music? Every bit of it. All your experiences. And I think that, that that's what makes country music a, a wonderful, wonderful type of music is because every, I know, and I'm speaking for me only, but... Every song on there is either something I have lived or done or dreamed about doing, and it's all a part of my life. And that's the part of my life that I want people to know. What's in my music, that part is what I want them to know. You know, and, and, I, and I've said this, I listen to a lot of country when I drive in the car, uh, going back and forth between Los Angeles and Northern California. You folks put so much of your, of your life into your songs, and you put so much heart and so much feeling into it. I mean, it's, it's not only a song, it's the story of your lives, collectively, all of you. It really is. And I mentioned one song which I especially enjoyed. Uh, what part of no is it that you, don't, <laughs> yeah. that you don't get, right? That's right. But now, you do the oldies in your program, too. You're not afraid to go back to, uh, you know, some of the old times. I'm, I'm a big time uh, believer in, in the older country music, the, the Jeannie Seeley songs and the... Um, George Jones songs and, and some of the old classics and that's that's what turned me on to country music so I want it to be a part of of what I'm about today and again all of you have a tremendous bond with your audiences I've interviewed other performers in country and they have fan appreciation days and you all get together and you have coffee and you have uh, cake and you exchange me uh, recipes and messages what is it about this bond that, that you have with your audiences that few other have? I mean, they have the bond in concert, but they don't have, I, I, I wouldn't guess, and I, I'm, 
I may be way out, out of line here. What, what's the big rock? I, I'm sure Ice T doesn't have Fan Appreciation Day, you know. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't and know. And now it's... he'll call and say, yes, I do have Fan yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing, you know, ever since I grew up in country music, uh, I've been going to fanfare with my dad, and fanfare is, is what you're calling Fan Appreciation right. Day. And I just think it's something that, that started years and years ago i do not know exactly why but i know that country music fans are so loyal and it doesn't matter if if you've had a, a year without a hit record if they love you your family they're going to be there your family That's here's, right. here's clay on the toll free uh, this is very appropriate lake of the ozarks missouri hi clay it's tom you're hi, on the air how you doing Lori? fine yeah, my question is, um, would it, have you thought about or uh, is it in progress that you would do some crossover work with some of Keith's uncut songs? Uh, um, I, I remember uh, right after he passed that you, he had some that he released. I'm just, you know, something like what uh, Natalie Cole did with her father? With, with Keith's? Yeah. Well, actually, on, on the new Keith Whitley, the tribute album to Keith, uh -huh. Keith and I did a duet together. Right. That was actually recorded before Keith passed away. But as far as going back in and doing things with Keith's music, I don't have any plans to do that. However, I would like to do some of that stuff in the future with my, my father, George Morgan. Oh, that would be great. But I don't have any plans on, on doing that with Keith. Well, I just, I really enjoy both your, your, your music and, you know, Keith and yours. And, and I, you. I always try to... <laughs> I try to buy all your albums, and, and I watch you, you on uh, all trying. the videos. So. <laughs> but I appreciate you asking and, and talking with me tonight. Sure, my pleasure. Clay, I enjoyed talking with you too, pal. You too, and I, hey, I, I watch you every night because, uh, believe it or not, my wife is in the, the bar business. She doesn't get home until 2 or 3, so she, I'm always watching you. Does she, what, is she owner or is she 10 bar? Yeah, she's owner. Owner, okay. See, uh, Good I, I, I can't go to sleep until she gets home. I understand that. And, and, and by the way, Clay, tell her, keep her eyes on the bartenders, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you much. Good night, Clay. Okay, bye. I've got a minute here. I want you to talk about being at the White House. You sang for George Bush when you were at the White House. And it's, it's, it's got to be tremendous. I want to say I was so excited about doing that show. Yeah, because, I mean, just to go to the White House. Well, first off, you know, I, I was real tired. My schedule was really, really, really rough. And my management and everybody said, Lori, this is really a wonderful thing for you to do, and you need to go do it. And I said, oh, I want to do it, but I'm so tired. And Get out of here. We, You're never too tired to go to the White House. Well, Come that's on. true. But anyway, I was. At this particular time, I was really, really tired. And we went on, we went and toured the White House, yeah. and we got to meet uh, President and Mrs. Mrs. Bush. Bush and yeah. Everything was just wonderful. And we get there, and we're gone, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gone through the show. K.T. Oslin's on the show. I think uh, Ricky Van Shelton might have been there, and Tammy Wynette, and Alabama. A bunch of people were on the show. And my song, I did a, a beautiful song that, that I had recorded years, uh, well, now, years ago, a song called Dear Me. Mm -hmm. And they were going to televise the show and everything, and I went on and was worn out, but I got there, and I had this beautiful dress we bought, and I did the, sh did, did the song in front of the, the president and you know, the first lady and all this stuff, and called my people in Ohio and said, look, I'm, we're going to be on this wonderful yep. tribute thing to the, to the president, and everybody was watching it, and my family and everything, mm -hmm. and we, it was weeks, okay, we were waiting for the show. Yeah, well, it's almost as long as I'm waiting and for the payoff of the story. And we watched the show, <laughs> we watched the show, and everybody was on the show but me. Oh, God, they, they cut me. You're the face on the cutting room floor. They cut me, and I was so mad. So, but anyway, I, I got over it, and I actually uh, performed for their 50th wedding anniversary just a couple weeks ago at the uh, Opry House in Nashville. Oh, for George and Mrs.? Mm -hmm. Oh, very, very nice now. You know, I've never been to the White House. You need to go. I've been asked many, many times, but you know something? There's only one way I'm going there. How's that? Resident. Resident. All right. All right. It's a joy to meet you. I'm an thank enormous you. fan of your music and of you, and I thank you for stopping by, and I My hope you'll pleasure. visit us again soon. Lori Morgan, folks, and the, uh, the new CD is out now. You can see it right there on your TV screens. Here it comes, the new CD, the Lori Morgan CD. I hold it up. There it is right there. Thanks again, Lori. Thank you. See you next time. Next, three of California's Westinghouse finalists, and they're all there saying, what the hell is that? You know, what do they do? You know, close a refrigerator? <laughs> Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. On my face, it's whooping time.